Good evening, Wine Press friends and family. It's good to be with you again tonight. Uh, it's been a good week. It started off on Sunday evening. We had a very encouraging uh, evening Sunday night. If you're not coming out on Sunday night, you're, you're kind of missing the setup for the rest of the week. And I think uh, this Sunday we won't be doing anything on Sunday night in, uh, in reflection of uh, Father's Day. But uh, I encourage you to come out and uh, be a part of this uh, roundtable experience that we're doing on Sunday nights. Man, it's just a, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure when you get hijacked by the Holy Spirit. And he comes in and just takes it exactly where it needs to go. And uh, I'll share this with you just a little bit. Um, during Sunday evening, we were experiencing things with some young men that came in just out of the blue. Uh, they thought they came here by coincidence, but I believe it was an appointment. Um, and the longer they were here, they were realizing that too. So in that um, experience with these young men, um, just, a, just a powerful experience, that uh, our dear Sharon came and brought her ukulele, which I've been here almost a year. I've never seen her bring the ukulele, much less I've he never heard her play. But this night, she decided to bring it. And in that, um, I'll set up that part of the story, then I'll set up the part that I have. <clears throat> Got a little bit of buzz up here, but um, if it sounds okay to you, I'll just keep going. Um, she uh, played a song that these men had been singing and humming along before they even got here. And so that was a, an, an appointment and a connection that the Holy Spirit was setting up this evening before they even got here. So when they got here, they, they were singing the song. Uh, what's the name of the song, Pastor Polly? There's a river of life flowing through me and uh, spring up a well and... Uh, uh, you know the song. If I was to sing it, you'd be very familiar with it. So she had her uh, ukulele. She was playing along, and we played that several times. And uh, while this was going on, we were sharing and speaking life over to this young man. My sister is blowing up my phone, my sister, my dear sister Frida. And um, there's some restoration happening on Sunday night. While we were experiencing this, Four hours away, she was experiencing some of the seeds that she had planted back in October. She planted love, and on Sunday night, she was harvesting love in her family. And she's been taking care of her, um, I say husband, ex-husband, whether it's ex-husband or husband, she's been taking care of him. He's in a home. Uh, hospice has been called in, so it's, it's getting critical uh, there. They're making some hard decisions as a family and stuff. And in this family, he wanted to uh, give his youngest daughter something, and he couldn't decide what to uh, give her. And they had been talking about it. Sorry about that. We had a little thing there. Is that a little bit better? Sorry about that, guys. So in this, uh, my sister had been talking to him, and she's actually flying out here to see dad uh, in this time it's crucial in his life this relationship has been non-existent uh, for over seven years no communication it was just a lot of bad things happen and 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 nobody uh got unstuck from the situation we're going to go a little bit further in that uh everybody was stuck in this relationship between the kids and the parents and the grandkids it was just stuck as a family so uh, the Lord has been working on his heart. He got baptized at the home. They brought in a pool, and they put him in there, and he got baptized. He's getting things right. It may have not have started well, but it's going to end well, I believe, in his life. It's not how we start. It's how we finish. It's how we finish. He's, wrecking, he's, he's making uh, men's to get his family back together, and he wants to do something. So in this conversation, Frida's texting me one text after the next, boom, 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 while we're experiencing here, and Sharon's plucking away on the ukulele, and, and I'm just, I'm, I'm bursting, and we're going to talk about bursting here just a little bit. It's bursting that the Holy Spirit in that moment, and it's not just here. It can be anywhere at that moment. As soon as he comes into the picture, things change. So she's texting me, and she's like, yeah, um, he's been wanting to give her something, and uh, you don't know what it is. And 
uh, the last conversation I had with him, he wants to give her a ukulele. <laughs> what is that? That is the Lord talking to us through a ukulele that Sharon had no idea that these guys were coming in. They were going to sing the same song and all that stuff. And then I'm over here like he wants to give his youngest daughter a ukulele before he passes away. You can't make this stuff up. And what that does is it's prompting us to be so attentive to what the Lord is saying through a ukulele, through whatever it is. Pay attention. Pay attention. There's more to come. And these, these moments that we experience, man, it's so powerful. And what it does is encourages us that he knows where we are. He knows, he knows where we want to be. So in these moments where we're, we're here, and we need to be here, he's helping us. He's helping us. And he's giving us a plan and direction. And it's all we have to do is be obedient. That's all we have to do. So uh, let's pray over this. Uh, I got I a plunger as a prop up here, so you know where this is kind of going to go. It's going to get a little bit messy to start, but it's going to end well. We just talked about that. It may get a little messy starting, but we're going to end well. We're going to finish well. We're going to be free, flowing, flowing freely by the time we get done with this. So, Heavenly Father, we pray over tonight. We thank you for your... <sighs> The Holy Spirit that just comes in and helps us. Lord, your word teaches us that you have given us a helper to get through this stuff. We're not alone, that we can ask, seek, and knock, and you'll be there for us. So as we come in tonight, teach us and show us what we need to see, what we need to hear, and then exactly what we need to obey is your word. Your word is truth. So I speak life over this tonight, that not my words, but yours, but your words, Lord. Let it be an encouragement. It's an encouragement to me, and I know it's for somebody else. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we talked a little bit last week about weed and reap, and um, we had baskets. I talked to you previously. I put baskets out the house, and I put fruit in the baskets, and we're going to harvest what we plant. And... um, I reminded Frida that when we went out there, um, we wasn't feeling the love from the other side of the family. We wasn't feeling it. But Frida continued to do all what she needed to do in love. She's like, I'm just thankful I got an invitation. I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful. She kept saying it over and over. No complaints. Now, I was complaining a little bit. It's like, I dare them. We flew all the way out here. You know, all, you know we can get caught up in that. But no, she brought it back because she wanted a harvest. She wanted to harvest, and she wasn't say, wouldn't taken that experience as a negative one. It wasn't. She went out there to do what she needed to do, and she did it in love, and now she's harvesting it. And it ain't over. That's for the whole family. It's a generation thing that's going to happen, and it's not over. It's just started. So I encouraged her. I, as soon as I got out of here... <laughs> I had to return the text and call her. I was like, I don't, it's not text worthy. You got to call. You got to call because it's too much going on here. So I shared the part about the ukulele, and she's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I was like, no, Frida, the Lord is real, man, and he is really talking to us. Not, a, not just in that situation, but the, the things that were happening here. He was really talking to these young men and us as well. I think everybody got encouraged that night and received what the Holy Spirit had for us. And that's what... Anytime we come together, we can have that same experience. Something is going to happen. So we talked about weed and reap, and uh, I, I had put a few things in my basket at home of fruit, and we harvested, of course, through Frida and this other experience. I, I counted that as fruit, so I, I put it in there, and there's more to come uh, with this, this recent trip that we have coming up. Uh, there's going to be more fruit added, and um, we've planted a lot of seeds we planted a lot of seeds with the Lord's help, and um, those, speeds were, those seeds were specific. So it will uh, be a very specific harvest in those times. So let's remind ourselves in Galatians 6, 9, and don't allow yourselves to be weary in planting good seeds for the season of reaping a wonderful harvest you have planted is coming. So tonight we're going to uh, focus a little bit on the word believe. We'll have a hard time reaping a harvest in unbelief. It starts with, where's your trust? Where's your faith? It'll be limited. It'll be limited, Caleb. We don't want the limited. We want 30, 60, 
And I'm, I'm thinking maybe we don't have to settle for 100 either. Maybe we could have more than 100 fold. Let's just push it out there a little bit. We serve an unlimited God. Let's just go a little bit further with it. That's what, he wants us to stretch a little bit here. And every time we're being challenged, we're growing. Every time we meet a confrontation, a uh, disappointment, we're growing. And our chance and opportunity to grow is through that. Not getting stuck in the situation, not staying there in this mess. Remember, I got a plunger over here. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Not to stay in this stagnant uh, area, but he wants us to push through that and get back to the free-flowing that he wants us to walk and talk and live in. It's possible. It is possible through the Holy Spirit that will help us. The helper will help us. So get ready, get ready, get ready, and stay ready. And John 7, 38, it says, Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the Scripture says, and that's in John 7, 38. And if you're stuck in a situation, you're stuck in a uh, emotional state or a spiritual state, you're stuck in this roadblock, you're not going to have the flowing from the innermost being there. It's going to be limited or not at all. So what we need to do when they come to those circumstances is ask the Holy Spirit to go ahead and push us through. So we are bursting. That's what it says here. So the, the rivers of living water will burst out from within you. So it starts with the word believe. The definition of that is to accept something as true, genuine, or real. That's where it starts. That's faith and trust in him that no matter what it looks like, no matter what it smells like, no matter what the circumstance is, we only believe. Just believe. Sounds extremely simple, and I believe it is. In Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. In Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In James 1, 6, you guys see where I'm going here? James 1, 6, but let him ask in faith. Without doubting, and I, I like to write in there, without complaining, without doubting, complaining, uh, disbelief, all that stuff. For one who doubts is like a wave of a sea driven and tossed by the wind. That's when we get into that state that uh, we have no control. But wh what we want to do is give our control over to the Holy Spirit and the Lord. And when we release that to him, he is definitely in control. But we got to let go first. We got to release that. In John 16, 31, Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? After all these things that they experienced, and he was asking them, Now do you believe? So let's read uh, the better part of John 7, 38 again. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out, out from you within you, flowing from the innermost being, just like the scripture says. Get unplugged, get plunged already, get free from debris. I'm going to use some plumbing illustrations and some experiences that I've had in plumbing. It's not really about the plumbing, but it's about learning how to address the problem quickly, get it back to working order, and get back on where you need to be free-flowing and working properly. It's not really about plumbing, but I'm going to use some illustrations here. It might seem a little bit off, but I believe that the Lord was talking to me through these years, several years of plumbing experiences that he's been triggering me that, okay, you're getting, you're getting better at this. When you see the problem, you know what size, wrench, you know what valve, and you know where the water shutoff is, and you know what tools to get. And not only what to get, but you know where it's at. You can quickly grab the right tool and get it ready to go and clean up the mess, and it's back in working order, free, flowing, as it should be, and working properly. It's the worst when it's not working properly, and it's the best when it is, right? When we're not working and doing what we need to do and how we need to do it, it's the worst. We're miserable because we know better. Becky, we've already experienced too much. 
We can't go back. But in that state, sometimes we get stuck, and we don't know what to do and what to say and, and all these things. But all we need is a plunger. All we need is a plunger to get it free from debris and get it back in right order. I'm going to get back to that just in a minute. So uh, we have to address quickly the occasional stop-ups. Being stuck, non-flowing, discouraged, hopelessness, smelly, stinking thinking, a place of stagnant lifestyle or unbelief that keeps us from being fruitful. Um, I, I might have shared with you that the, uh, Tabitha and, and my wife had worked at a KOA there for uh, on and off for about two years after we moved to Tennessee, and they had about 25 to 30 toilets, showers, sinks. Uh, it was a 26-acre property. They were something plumbing-wise going on every day. It was a jiggle a handle, a leaky valve, uh, a plugged toilet, there's water in the shower from the, the washing machines. There was something going on on this property every day with plumbing. So guess who they called when the boss was out of town? It was me. <laughs> and here I come. I'm running with my plunger. Okay, what unit is it? Is it the showers in the back? Is it the showers in the front? Is it somebody's motor home? Sometimes they don't know what to do. They get somebody, hey, have you ever worked on this before? It's kind of stuck. I don't know what's going on. You learn a lot. And what I learned a lot through that was the owner of the property, the co-owner there, uh, his name was Mark, and I talk about him often, that um, he had a treasure trove of parts and uh, devices and valves and washers and all kind of stuff plumbing related. And he showed me where each cutoff valve was to each section of the park so we could lose water just as a partial until we got it fixed and not have to shut down the whole park. And so in his shed, they, he had uh, complete toilets, the, the guts to the toilet. He had extra plungers. He had uh, everything. So it really wasn't a problem. We only needed to find where it was at, assess the problem, go to the shed, get what we need, come back and fix it, clean it up, back in working order. So watching him and experiencing that, and when he was not there, the girls would call me, of course. And uh, there was some messes, man. There was some serious messes. One time they had a, at the bottom of where all the RVs parked, there was a, a septic tank there that everything from that side of the park went there. And then they pumped it to another piece of property because there was no grass area there. If you're familiar with a septic tank, it has to have leach lines to the excess water. The solids go to the bottom, the water comes to the top, and the leach lines go out in the grass. And I never knew anything about septic tanks, so I'm going to get into that in just a minute, until I moved to Tennessee, and I bought a house with a septic tank, and I got familiar with how it worked and how it doesn't work properly. <laughs> experience. I'm talking about experience tonight. So that tank had a pump in it, electric pump, so when the water came up, it hit this valve, like a toilet basically, and it would, that pump would come on and it would shoot the water. Uh, it was probably about 1,000 feet to the, another piece of property where it was just grass and leach lines. And the grass does grow greener over the septic tank. I don't know <laughs> if you guys ever knew if that's not just a saying. It grows like crazy over the septic tank or leach lines. Nevertheless, uh, they had a problem where that pump stopped working. So he had to call uh, outside plumbers in like industrial plumbers, because there's a big tank. It's probably about half the size of this room. And at the bottom of that tank, there's a pump that went out. So uh, I got to help in doing that. You, uh, you take the lid off. It's about a 24-inch lid. And um, generally, when they put those in, they have a rope tied onto the pump, and it's tied up to the side where you take the lid off. Well, guess where the rope is? It went down to the bottom. <laughs> So they couldn't just pull it up and replace it and then put it back down and plug it back in and start working. So I helped the guy there. Uh, he was just there by himself, so I was helping him manage through that. It smelled. Uh, we had to put a temporary pump in there to get the water down to the level so he could actually go down in there. Terrible experience. And I was just on the outside having a hard time, but he was on the inside. But the, you have to get these things, you have to get to the root of the problem sometimes. You have to get to the root of the problem. Now, anything external and on the top right there wasn't going to fix the problem. And if it was, it was going to be temporary. So he, had to, he knew what he had to do, and he prepped himself and psyched himself out 
and he went down there and got it done and put the pump back in there. So in these things, uh, in my own personal experience about a, a uh, septic tank, uh, Andrew was at work, I was at home, I was doing a little laundry, and the washing machine water came up in the shower. So I was like, okay, let's turn that off. So I was like, well, the shower must be plugged. I'm going to get the plunger and plunge the shower. And I plunged, 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 and it went down a little bit. And it drained, but slowly. So I called the neighbor. I was like, hey, have you ever had this problem? He's like, oh, I got just the thing. It's, it's called Firestorm. It's a powder that you put down in there. When the water goes down, you put the powder down in there. He's like, then you put water on top of it, and you leave the room. I was like, well, why do you leave the room? He's like, because it, 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 it ignites a, like an a explosion. He's like, it's the coolest thing. What it does is the, the percussion pushes it through. I'm like, that does sound kind of cool. Let's try it. So I went over to his house. He had it. I put it in there, and I, 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 it, was, it was the worst thing to do. After, after I realized from an a, a actual plumber, they sell that product, but it's not for somebody that don't know what they're doing. And I clearly didn't know what I was doing. So I put it down in there, put it down, put the water on top, left the room, closed the door, and it was all boom. And I'm like, got it. Went back in there, same problem. And I did it a couple times, and nothing happened. So eventually I was like, okay, I got to call a plumber here. I don't know, I don't know what to do. Um, so he comes out. They walk in. Okay. And they walk back out. I was like, what are these guys doing? I'm paying them by the hour, a lot of money by the hour. They went to the, to the outside. The problem wasn't, uh, that was the result of the problem on the inside. The problem was on the outside. They went exactly right around there. They could see the line where the septic tank was. It was greener grass than anywhere else. They measured out about two feet from the side, dug down about a foot, and there's a lid there. These guys know what they're doing. They know what they're looking for. There's a lid under the dirt. They pick the lid up. Yep, there's your problem. Unplugged it, done. I was only looking at the result. But I didn't know where I could get the access. And I was learning here. Learning how to, where the access of the problem is. And start there. Don't start on the result. Start where the access point was. Learning. Learning like the clean out on a house. The plumber, that's the first thing he asks. Oh, you got a plumber coming? Where's your clean out at? He don't even go in the house. He starts out there. Access. Find out where the access is. Start getting the problem fixed there. And it's a whole lot less smelly out there, too. <laughs> <laughs> experience. We're talking about experience here. And when I, I truly believe that has, uh, he has something better for us, then when we get stuck in the circumstance or in the temptation that we, we are stuck. He has something better for us. Don't get stuck in that situation. Go to the source. Go to the point of access and start there. And the Holy Spirit's going to... we got the greatest manual on the planet right here. This is the greatest plumbing manual you'll ever pick up. It'll unplug you in every situation that will come your way. There's an answer for it. And it, the Holy Spirit will help us find it. If we can't find it, he'll help us find it in here. It's, it's, it's the only manual that will, you can apply to any area of your life, any area. Pick one. It's here. The answer is here. The question's complicated, but the answer is simple. There's the answer. There's the answer. So keep the plunger handy and get unplugged quickly and get back into flowing freely like he has designed us to, to be. Being prepared makes all the difference. All the difference. And I learned how to be prepared. I didn't use that uh, firestorm stuff anymore. Uh, the plumber didn't recommend that. He's like, that's just going to damage your pipes, and I didn't know that. But when you're in desperate mode, you do desperate things. I was desperate. Actually, I was desperate to save money, and it ended up costing me more. It ended up costing me more. I got the plumber there, and he was working, he freed the debris from the, the pipe coming out of the house into the septic tank, and he's like, yeah, I was kind of looking at your septic tank, you need to have that pumped, you got to have those pumped periodically, and I didn't know that, I was like, okay, you guys do that, he's like, no, you'll have to come hire a company, that's all they do is pump septic tanks, so I was like, okay, he's like, well, I rec recommend this guy, and I'm not making this up, you guys, his name was Bruce, Bruce Pugh, 
I'm not making it up. His name was Bruce Pugh, right on the side of the truck and the whole thing. So I called him. He come right out, and uh, I gave him my address, and uh, I was like, hey, the septic's on the, the other side of the house, but I have a driveway in the front. You can pr-. He's like, I know. I've been there before. He's like, I've been working in this air- area 35 years. I pretty much have been almost to everybody's houses in the area. I know where the leech lines are. I know where I can get to. And I know what I, I was like, okay, this is the guy. This is the guy. So he gets there, and uh, he's like, hey, I see you already had the lid off for me. I appreciate that. I was like, no, actually, I, I hired plumbers to come out here and um, get, it, get it unclogged. I thought it was an internal problem. But it was actually an external problem that it was stuck here. He's like, oh, no. He's like, son. He sits down on the edge of the air conditioner there. He's like, sit down here for a minute. I wanna, I wanna, don't never call the plumber. Don't never call the plumber. Call me. He's like, because that's the first thing I'm going to look at right here. And I can, I can pump and free the debris for the same price. And what you paid the plumber was something I was going to have to do anyway. He's like, so he's like, I'm teaching you something here. And he was very sincere about it, and I appreciate that. And uh, I was like, you will be my first guy I call, Mr. Pew. <laughs> so very, very nice gentleman. Um, and I, I got a kick out of the, the truck. He had a, a large truck. It was probably 2,000-gallon truck, tank, you know, that they could do multiple septics without having to go and, and uh, get rid of it. And it said on the back of it, I haul milk on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not making this stuff up. I got a point here, and I'm making the point of if we, if we get the right tool at the right time and apply it to the right spot, it's going to free us from debris every time. I wasted time and money and effort. I didn't, I didn't have the, the right order of things, so it cost me. It cost me a little bit, but I learned. I learned something there. This is what it, I wrote in here. It said, uh, let's see if I can find it now. Stay with me, stay with me. Let's find the access point and start there first. Save yourself some time, effort, in this case, money. It would have saved me several hundred dollars. And the frustration in that and the complaining in that. I was canceling out all kinds of things by complaining instead of getting the right order of things. The Holy Spirit will help us do this, folks. He's helping me every day work through some stuff and free from debris. And every once in a while, i got to get this plumber out, uh, the, the plunger, and be a plumber. Be a plumber. Address the problem. Get in there. Get it, get it free from debris. Uh, just recently, we had a, um, uh, a guest come to the house and uh, had a toilet problem. Again with the toilets. I don't know. It just uh, seems like I've been... Uh, uh, intimate with toilets here lately, um, and um, I think Tabitha got my attention, and she did this, and pointed to the bathroom, and it's like, I already knew, <laughs> Where, I already knew, I already knew, I was like, okay, yeah, bring it, that's not a problem, so I went in there, addressed the situation, I was like, okay, and my wife knew very little at the time what I was doing, I ran out to the garage, picked up a few tools, that I was schooled in knowing what I needed to address the problem. Went in, addressed it, flushed it, plunged it, done, wiped everything down, back in working order. In minutes, minutes, and it cost me nothing. No complaining, no effort, no $200 plumber bill. Bless those guys. They have a job to do, and we are thankful for them. (laughs) <laughs> it's the worst when it's not working properly and it's the best when it is and you can apply that to your life when we're not working properly we're miserable we're, we're, but when everything is in working order we're free from debris we have plunged these things out of our life it's the best it's, it's a lifestyle and we can stay there we can stay there day after day after day and the turnaround time is getting less and less and less have your moment Get, un- get it unplugged, get it pushed on out of the way, and get back free-flowing, 
free flowing, free flowing, free flowing. The Lord has given us the master plumber to teach us and the master plan to go by. He will free us from debris every day, sometimes several times a day if necessary. He will come back and he will do it again because that's the God we serve if we keep coming back to him for the plan, back to him for in repentance. And whatever that is that needs to be done, go to the source. Go to the source. So find the access point and start there. The Holy Spirit is your guide. Don't look at the result, but find the clean out first, what needs to be cleaned out first. Go there first. In John 14, 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father, Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, even plumbing. Even plumbing. And in the Passion Translation, that the, it says the Spirit of Holiness the spirit of holiness, the one like me, which is, he's talking about Jesus there, who sets you free and bring to remembrance all things that, you, that I have said to you. So he'll even bring back the stuff that we thought we forgot. He'll bring that back into our remembrance. Like, oh, I know what I need for that. I did it before. That's the Holy Spirit talking to us. Oh, you know what? I should have took those sodas out of the refrigerator. <laughs> right? I sh oh, the Holy Spirit told me and I got busy and I forgot. It's okay. We're learning how to get that response time down to a minimum. So have your uh, bump in the road. But don't let it be several bumps. Let it be a bump and you're, you're gone. You're back on the road to recovery. And in that turnaround time, uh, the Holy Spirit will be helping us uh, to stay there longer and longer and longer. It starts with believing. In the John Bevere book, The Awe of God stated, You will obey the one you fear, and you will serve and surrender to what you believe. I want to believe in him. I surrender to him, and my fear is in him. And that's not a bad fear. It's a reverent fear of the one that created the universe. And what you believe will either keep you stuck or flowing freely. It's whatever you believe in. You're going to, be, you're going to believe in the, the disappointment and the challenges. You're going to remain stuck. If you want to believe in him, he's going to get you unstuck, and you're going to be flowing freely. He has not left us here unprepared or to stay stopped up. He wants us free, flowing, and flowing free. And Sunday night, um, we were flowing pretty free. I believe that we were, we were working and experiencing, and just in that moment, it's, uh, you almost feel weightless. Like everything is just bills, problems, whatever is just gone. And we're, we're traveling light at that moment in that realm. And that carried on through Sunday night when we got home, sharing with Frida. It was getting pretty late. I was like, we got to call her. <laughs> we got to call her because this is, this, is, this is traveling light here. This is traveling light. The stuff that we've been carrying around, we're releasing it, and it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter because we have everything we need already. So Sunday night was the perfect example of flowing free and being hijacked by the Holy Spirit. I am so thankful that he uh, can toss our agenda to the side, and we're being more and more sensitive to be able to do that and allow him to do what he does best. Plunge us. Get us free from debris. Get the smelly stuff out of the way and get it back to clean, free-flowing water. It talks about it in the first part of Genesis, and he talks about water. In Ezekiel, it's flowing from the temple all the way to Genesis 22. So the water is this representation. In the, in the, he had water come out of a rock, I mean, it's, a, it's all through here. Read it. I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up. It's just this, there's something about the water. Andrea talked about this several months ago. There's something about the water that he wants us that free flow avenue. As he pours in, we flow it out. As he pours it in, it's that vessel that it's never ending, never ending. Only we get it stopped up. 
with our debris of life and all these other problems that we come across, we get it stopped up, and then when it gets stopped up, it gets stagnant and smelly. That's not his fault. That's when we, we get into unbelief, that he can't do it. I better take care of this myself and all those things. That's when it gets stopped up. But he wants us to take the spiritual plunger and get rid of it. Send it back where it needs to go, back to the septic, back to the pit of hell. That's where it came from. That's where it needs to go. And use this to get it there. <laughs> so he's going to give us tools to do that. He's already given us every tool that we need. So keep the plunger handy. Get unplugged. Get unstopped quickly. And get back to flowing freely. So I hope this encourages you tonight. I, um, I wrestled with it a little bit because it's not a popular subject. It really isn't, but I had shared so many uh, experiences with the ones here uh, last Tuesday, and um, it's just, what is the deal with these toilets? And I got, I'm in the bathroom all the time fixing something. What is that? So the Lord was showing me through those experiences that you may have to spend a little time in the bathroom and getting these things worked out. And sometimes they don't stay fixed. You may have to revisit again. But in those experiences we're getting quicker and quicker and we're taking the right tools in there to do the right thing get it done get it back in right standing with the lord and he'll be there every time to help us get back in right standing get back in right standing so i had a joke related to this uncle donnie and caleb if you're listening uh there was a break-in at the local police department and somebody broke in and stole all the toilets yeah in the police report they had nothing to go on <laughs> Sorry about that. It was a toilet joke. It was actually the cleanest one I could find. So, <laughs> uh, so if a cowboy is happy, does that make him a jolly rancher? I don't know. Maybe. I got another one here. The oldest computer was owned by Adam and Eve. It was, a, it was an apple with a very limited memory. Just one bite and everything crashed. <laughs> But we, we have overcome because Jesus has saved us, redeemed us, and gave us the plan of salvation. So we have the largest meat computer on top of our shoulders that has ever created known to man. And he created it. And we can remain in right standing with him with the Holy Spirit's help. With the Holy Spirit's help. Great things never come from comfort zones. So it's got to get a little dirty and smelly sometimes. But great things come out of it. Great recoveries, great restorations, great uh, redemption comes out of getting out of your comfort zone. So I'm become, becoming very comfortable in the bathroom on knowing what to do and how to do it and cleaning up the mess like it ever, never happened. Right back and free-flowing just the way it needs to be, functioning and doing what it was designed to do. So I hope this encourages tonight. Uh, we're going to be gone but uh, we'll be released in presence. We'll be released from this, this place, but not from your presence. The presence of the Holy Spirit goes. We feel like we uh, are being sent um, to possibly help somebody get unplunged, get, get, get the free from debris from somebody else, because what we have, we're not supposed to keep. We're supposed to give it to somebody else. So I don't know who that is, but the Lord knows. So uh, we're going to make our plans, and he's going to direct our path. So uh, we love you guys, and we'll see you Sunday. <laughs>